بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Hi, this video about thyroid examination. For thyroid examination, you should actually start with introduce yourself to the patient, exposure, and proper positioning, and clean your hand, and explain to the patient what you would like to do. So let's start examination now. Hi, I'm Dr. Walid Al Bakr. What's your name? Ezo. Ezo. Ezo, I would like to examine your thyroid exam, and if you have any problem, just or discomfort, just let me know. Okay. You start with cleaning your hand. The proper positioning for examining the thyroid is to keep the patient in, in sitting position. And you start with an inspection. First of all, the best way is to hyperextend the neck. And you start by looking at the neck anteriorly and laterally. So anteriorly, you look at any evidence of thyroidectomy scar just in the inferior border of the thyroid. You need to look for any visible masses or any fungating mass. You look for any redness or swelling. I can't see any in this patient. After that, you ask the patient to stick his tongue out. Ask the patient to stick his tongue out. Could you please? And, and you look for any moving mass that you, you notice in the midline that indicate thyroglossal cyst. Then ask the patient to uh, swallow. Basically, just give him a sip of water. Give it to the patient. Keep the water in your mouth. Then, can you please swallow? As you know, the thyroid is attached to the trachea. And the swallowing is moving with the swallowing. So, this is one of the important signs and maneuver that you should do in thyroid examination. After finishing the inspection, you go for palpation. The palpation is to approach. There is an anterior approach and there is a posterior approach. And the best way is to go for the posterior approach. After finishing the inspection, we would like to do the palpation of the thyroid exam. There is two approach. There is anterior approach and there is a posterior approach. As you know, for the thyroid exam for the posterior approach is probably the best way to palpate the thyroid. The thyroid is a small loop, about a 20 gram, above the subacea notch just attached to the trachea. There is two loops here, the right loop and the left loop. And the isthmus is just on the anterior side of the trachea. What you do is basically to feel the supracellar notch, put your finger in the groove in the right side, and fix the trachea in this side. With two fingers, put your hand in the other side and feel the thyroid loop against the trachea. The same thing you do in the other side. You fix the trachea in the left side and use two fingers and feel the loop in the right side. To make sure that you are feeling the side of the loop, ask the patient to swallow. Basically, take a sip of water. See that one? Keep the water in your mouth. Can you swallow, please? And feel the side of the loop moving across your fingers. If you feel something, you need to define that mass. So, you need to feel whether this mass is nodular or not nodular. You need to feel if it's symmetrical or asymmetrical. You need to feel if it's tender, like in thyroiditis or hemorrhagic cyst or thyroid cancer. You need also feel what is the size of that. You take a tape measure and you try to measure. You try to measure the mass whether it is about like one to two centimeters, it is a thyroid nodule or it is a, a, a huge a goiter. After that, you need to uh, feel the evidence of the borders and uh, also whether it is fixed like in thyroid cancer or not fixed. Palpation is not complete without actually examining the lymph node. So you have to examine the submental, the submandibular, anterior cervical lymph node, upper, middle, and lower group, and the posterior cervical lymph node. And if you feel any lymph node, you have to define the distribution of this lymph node and also the size of this lymph node. Evidence of lipid, uh, lipidinopathy indicates thyroid cancer and high possibility of thyroid cancer. After that, after putting the palpation, you need to go for the scultation. Scultation of the thyroid is also important and frequently missed by medical student. Scaltation, it, you might check evidence of thyroid debris, which is a specific sign for grave thyroid toxicosis. 
use the bell of the thyroid, bell of the diaphragm, and you put your stethoscope on the thyroid loop. Ask the patient to hold his breath. Hold your breath. Then breathe normally. And you look for any evidence of thyroid brewing. Then we go to percussion. Percussion is very important, checking for any events of retrosternal goiter. You look and allocate the sternal angle. The sternal angle is attached to the second intercoarser space. And once you feel that one, you look to the supersternal notch. That distance is about four to five centimeters. You need to percuss, start from the sternal angle up to supersternal notch. Ideally, this retrosternal area should be resonant. If it is dull, it might be retrosternal goiter. If this is the case, then you need to percuss in sub area, looking for how big the retrosternal goiter. Also, you can define retrosternal goiter by looking to the inferior border of the thyroid. And if you cannot define that one, it might indicate retrosternal goiter. Also, you can check for any evidence of deviation of the trachea. Again, it might indicate a huge goiter that caused displacement of the thyroid. Finally, there is a maneuver that we do for checking Pumperton sign. Again, another sign for retrosternal goiter. Can you put your hand up, please? And you ask the patient to hold his hand above his head for about 30 seconds to one minute. By this maneuver, you can reduce the thoracic output by 50%. And if you have that one, if the patient develop strider or develop shortest breath or congestion, it might indicate that this patient has huge retrosternal goiter. Okay. By this, we finish the thyroid examination. Frequently, we ask our medical student to examine other extrathyroid manifestation. And the most important is examining the eyes. So when we examine the eyes, we look at the eyes. Can you look straight, please? We look for any evidence of lid retraction. Also, we fix his head, and we ask him to follow the fingers about 50 centimeters away from the head. Then we ask him to follow the fingers and look for any evidence of lid lag. Also, we look to the side of the eyes, looking for any evidence of a proptosis or exophthalmos, which is a very specific sign for a grave disease. Also, we check for any evidence of ophthalmoplegia. So follow my fingers, please, sir. And we're looking for any evidence of diplopia. So graze thyrotoxicosis, it can affect the extraocular muscles. After that, checking the hand is an important also sign in especially thyrotoxicosis. We, uh, we ask the patient to, uh, you can keep your hand, sir, down. We check the hand for if it is warm and sweaty, and we check for any events of tachycardia. Then we check for any events of a clopping in the fingers. And finally, which is very important, is checking for fine tremor. Can you put your hand like that, sir? Put it together, please. Then we use to, uh, a piece of paper to improve the sensitivity of the fine tremor. If the patient has fine tremor, that might suggest hyperthyroidism. Another manifestation that we do is uh, and signs. We check for any evidence of a pretibial mixedema, which is kind of a skin rash that develops in 1% of a grave disease. Also, we check for uh, um, uh, reflexes. So in thyrotoxicosis, we expect to find hyperreflexia. And in hypothyroidism, we expect to see delayed relaxation or hang reflex. Patient, after you finish, you thank your patient. Thank you very much for your time. By this, we are done with the thyroid examination. And after you finish, you need to thank your patient. Thank you, Mr. Izo, for your time. Thank you. Uh, this is Dr. Walid Al-Bakr, Assistant Professor, Consultant of Diabetes and Endocrinology. Thank you very much.